In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. These two propositions that Jesus is both fully divine, fully deity, fully God, and fully man are critical not only to right belief, but to right action in the Christian life. You see, when the Lord gives us orthodox faith, it's not just for us to believe some set of arbitrary propositions. It is because belief in those words, belief in that truth, will unlock not only relationship, but also fruitfulness in our lives. And without either one or the other of these, we will go astray. You see, if we preach Christ's divinity to the exclusion of his humanity, we're going to lose the work of God. And if we pre preach Christ's humanity to the exclusion of his divinity, we will lose the person of God. Understanding that Jesus is all God and all man is understanding the person and the work of God. If we miss the humanity, we'll miss the work and we'll try to add our works to it, which can never be done for his work is unique. We may continue in it. He may send us to it, but we can never do it instead of him. We can never be his substitute. We can only access participation in his work through grace. And if we preach his humanity to the exclusion of his divinity, we'll lose a part of who God is. It's like this. If I'm read, writing letters to you from a far country, and you're reading these letters, you're loving these letters, and you're saying, I want to meet the man who wrote these letters. And then finally, I come into that country, and I meet you and say, here I am, I'm the writer of these letters. At that point, if you reject me, who has come to you and say, but I prefer these letters, you will have missed relationship with me. But on the other hand, if someone receives me and says, yes, I like you here sitting drinking coffee with me, but I don't like these letters, they'll lose a part of what I've done. You see, Jesus Christ can, comes to reveal God. That's why it says in that same chapter that I quoted from John 1, that no one has seen God at any time. Now, plenty of people saw God in the Hebrew Bible. But that's not what John is talking about. He's saying that no one has seen all of who God is at any time, but the only begotten, God, the only begotten, the only begotten Son, who is in the bosom of the Father, he has made him known. That means in the theology of John and what he's speaking from, from a Hebrew and Aramaic background of the New Testament, the theology involved in the faithful synagogue of those days, what he's saying is this, if anybody ever saw God, they saw the Word. And that same person who is the Word, who is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, added to himself human nature in the person of Jesus of Nazareth. And it's a wonderful refutation of the vain philosophies of that day and age and this day and age that first uh, that, that John 1.14 says that the word became flesh. You see, somebody might be able to get on board, and many Jews did at that time and thereafter, that the word of the Lord was God. That you that you would say something like in Archaean or Logos, Logos in Proston Teon Kateos Logos, that the word was God, that God was the word. He was with God in the beginning, that the word of God is how God makes himself known to the created world. That's something that a lot of people could get on board with. But verse 14, Kaologo sarx egeneto, that the word became flesh, sarx. This is particularly involved with humanity, the children of Adam. It's not embodiment. It's not being visual or auditory or experiential. God was all of those things already before John 1.14 came into being. But he became sarks, he became flesh, Hebrew basar. He, he took on what it meant to be one of Adam's children and joined himself to us. And see, so if you miss that he's God, you won't know who's joining himself to us. And if you miss that he's man, you won't know that he's joined. To know that Jesus is God is to know the person of God and so to rightly worship him. And if we miss that, at best, if it's in ignorance, we will have severely limited our communion with him. And at worst, it will mean our apostasy. And in the same way, if we miss the humanity of Jesus, the work of God, then we will try to do something in and of ourselves. And again, at best, it will be something in ignorance, but at worst could cause us to go astray, to live in hypocrisy, to do something that will be vain and worthless. And far be it from us to glorify what is vain and worthless.
So today, meditate and rest in the reality that God has joined himself to humanity. The God, the God of Abraham, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob has joined himself to us. And I encourage you to share this with your friends who may be coming from a Jehovah's Witness background because many lies have been told about John 1. And in fact, some of the main tenets of the Jehovah's Witness faith were based upon someone who claimed to know Greek when he didn't even know the alphabet. And there's no way that John 1, 1 ever has ever meant in any situation that the word was a God. No, he's the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That's who he is. But what he has done is joined himself to us, which is why Jesus does everything he does in the gospels as a man. And not only opens up to us who the father is, but what the father has done. And here's the thing. Here's the mind blowing one that John gives us at the end. Not only does Thomas say, my Lord and God, the theological fever pitch of the book of John, seeing who Jesus is. But then Jesus says, as the father has sent me, this is the, this is what he does as he's commissioning his disciples. Read all the commission language in the gospels. As the father has sent me, so now I send you. Wow. We can rest and be fruitful and have right worship in the knowledge that Jesus is all God and all man. He is the light of the world. He is the glory of Israel. He will be your light and your glory today as you complete the work that he sent you to do, which is trusting in his son. If you don't have the son, you have neither the father or the son. If you have the son, you have both the father and the son. Just like the man who wrote the letter from the faraway country. Before he ever came into that country, you might say, well, I believe in him. But once he's come and you've met him face to face, if you say, well, I've got the man of the letters, but I don't have the man who came into the country, that would be self-refuting. In the same way, you can't say I have the father, but not the son. No, you can only have the father through the son. He is the door. He is, as he said, Inana urcha wa shrara wa haya. I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. I am the path. I am the means to walk it and I'm the destination. That's who Jesus, the God man is. That's who he'll be for you today. Rest in who God is and what he has done in the Lord Jesus. Amen. Blessings from Arat Church. I hope to see you at Arat Church, either in person or online this Sunday at 10 a.m. for our teaching service, 1115 for our worship service. Blessings to you.